matrix, we, you have to create a matrix, a support matrix of devices on Android for the customer. Otherwise, you could have infinite costs because there's so many phones out there. You can come back and on the Acme phone, you know, Wiz, Wiz Biddle 2000, it doesn't work, right? That's the old Microsoft phone with Windows. It doesn't yeah. have any kind of hardware. You, you can't. Miracle of Windows, is that works at all? Right, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it depends on what stage you're at. So what I do now is flexible working hours, I allow them to work from home, I don't wait if they have an appointment. So, you know, as long as the work gets done. You know, and going back to the recruiting part, how we find additional people is we put our business office in a location next to a school that was producing great people and we started talking to professors and grabbing people, but we got just good offer good better. How do you keep organized? How do you keep people involved? I think social media is part of that. I mean, I, if you watch the Facebook group page on our, what, what's happening there, I mean, people, I'm a communications person, I don't have to do anything on that page. The community has it covered. We're essentially, like, we're largely a content company. Yeah. But this is not just about content, it's actually about connection and, like, getting people involved. And, like, how could we, what could we do at Civil Beat? Because we have this opportunity. We're, we're pulling data from capital.gov saying, this is what all the elected officials are voting on a particular bill at each committee stop. Then it also says from the campaign spending commission, here's what the donors are providing to each of the elected officials at this time. The third piece that we're looking to create is what the donors' positions are with verifiable um, statements made in news publications. So that kind of closes that, that three-part gap on the trend. And that's called the Hawaii Policy Portal? Hawaii Policy Portal. So if you're in a space where everyone's focused and working, then you're more apt to, to work instead of just like browsing the internet or playing Facebook games or something. Whereas if you're at home by yourself, then you don't really have those external factors coming in and you might be like, oh, I'm going to go get something from the fridge. And, oh, I'm going to go uh, uh, do something. Oh, here's a funny video. I'm gonna <laughs> Which actually is sometimes they have too. But yeah, I was wondering, Ben, in in your in your time with R and D, what kind of uh, kind of things have you seen, like interesting patterns that you wouldn't have, you know, really thought would have happened? It kind of surprised you. What I like, and one of the one of the use cases of a work co-working space that, that I think is is important is being able to watch other people work, like not watch. Why well, not be <laughs> like pair programming, right? Like looking over their shoulder and actually seeing, you know, watching one of my graphic designers do work in Photoshop. I'm like, oh, that's that's how. So it's not like someone in the organization goes out and captures the market research and brings it back to the product designer. Is a product or service designer sitting down, not just with a focus group, but with actual customers on a pretty regular basis, to not only get their input but to test prototypes with because then no one's translating. That's always the key. If you've got market, a market research person trying to translate the needs to a product designer, you lose a lot. And you lose a lot in the part where you are asking, well, why are those activities important to you? You just get attributes. You don't get the course. And yeah, you just say it that way. You know, right. the political profiles are more closely aligned to this particular uh, representative. So why do you have to have that kind of thing? self-policing, we just leave you alone. You guys operate on your own. And I think we're starting to get now our hand into your governance, and who's going to police it? Well, is it the big brother guy, or you on yourself? So self-policing, who says a Who says softer word than police? Right, thank you. Yes, me too. This one was uh, Polar Watch, and it only measured your dis you know, the speed and distance. This one, kind of interesting, you, you basically put it in your little pouch and put on your belt so it's kind of inconspicuous or relatively inconspicuous. What's kind of cool about this one is it works underwater. Oh. So the problem with this one is if it gets rained on, and I've gone through five of them, <laughs> um, it does tend to break, especially when you wash them. Right? But anyway, this, this, for those of you who are brand new to this, again, I think that um, you will basically have something equivalent to this on your body Within two years, whether you like it or not, so like a phone, you're gonna get chipped. Even if you have a dumb phone, <laughs> yep. organization, and then for a small community like ours, we spend so much resources just on overhead, and so so you know it'd be good if like Startup America, if it identifies a workforce development issue, 
to not start a whole workforce development council from the beginning because, gee, there's already a workforce development council, and so let's just talk to them and make them better, you know, and, and who's the right person to talk to that? And similarly for high capacity, you know, if it's, if like room is an issue, like being able to grow is an issue, I think I should be able to help you guys on that. Told was if it had gone through a regular procurement, it would have been a two year, two million dollar uh, procurement. And it took three months and uh, you know, two part time people. Great. Yeah. Great story. Hey, thank you so much for your time, Tim. I know you're really busy. I appreciate you speaking with me. Oh, you're very welcome. Again, Tim O'Reilly, O'Reilly Media, the guy who coined Web 2.0. Talk to you later. Thank you. Right now, it's, it's, we have to figure it out. I mean, there's, there's, and we're looking at different ways. The, the, uh, the state's trying to get us all together and involved in trying to, trying to figure out what's the best way. Do we all build there and compete? Do we build one and share and rent? Do we subsidize some? I mean, there's lots of different solutions, and I, we're, I mean, I'll be the first one to say it. We don't know what the, the best answer is. So we, well, we don't have a government that's going to subsidize our broadband, so how do you create you know, yeah, well, I mean, actually, the, the, the providers have to win something. They got to get something. But Peter, you're on the neighborhood board. What's the first thing I hear when T-Mobile or whatever? If you put this antenna in the park, I'm going to get a third. I'm going to grow a third year. My kids' eyes are going to fall out. That's right. And, this, and guess what? They can't get their antenna. Because the city council person comes up and said, it'll be over my dead body that I let them put that antenna in there. So, I mean, those are the, the so even the things that you, we try to do. There's also these competitions that the state puts on. I think KCC had a competition as well where the students come up with a 3D model and then I think the winning design is printed through Russ's company because he wins the time and everything. But uh, that's what one of um, Russ, Russ old you know, they said that uh, the 3D printing technology is pretty cool because basically actually spin the gears. So the kids design sort of levers and knobs like that. And that. So government, at least the government that we have today, was largely created at a time when it was very hard to do things like share solutions and share best practices and understand what's working where. The truth is it's not that hard now, right? Technology has changed the landscape. That being said, there are opportunities in this government space, for example, to do something that's not being done elsewhere. You know, one of the things that I've learned since coming here is, you know, just yeah, how much of the state of Hawaii is actually also interpenetrated with the city of Honolulu, and there's just some really interesting ways to, to sort of rethink government here locally uh, that could be transformative to the way we do government uh, in this country, and, and that would be the kind of disruptive opportunity that isn't being done in California, which has the most dysfunctional government in the country. It does, yeah. College. Um, and here I learned a different way of thinking, a uh, very different culture, you know, different language, and even though English, I spoke English before a little bit, but still the language was pretty different. And I learned, um, I studied human beings and the way computer systems think. So cognitive science is a discipline which, which is interdisciplinary, where uh, you study philosophy, psychology, computer science, and linguistics, and you think about how computer systems and human beings can interact with each other and enhance the human experience. Now, this book, Islandia, I love this book. It, it was one that shaped my move to Sebastopol to live out in the country, to have, it's a utopian novel, 
uh, that led me to try to build a company that wasn't just about the frenzied uh, search for profit. Or this book, Hit Me Like a Bolt of Lightning, it led me to change my life. There's a line in there, given that we can live only a small part of what there is in us, what happens to the rest? It's about a guy who changes his life in middle age, which is something I did. But it's not just big things. It can also be small things. I have a uh, corn on my right foot, and every time I see that little scab of callus, I think, maybe I have Mechstrom's disease. And if you'd read Space Plague when you were a kid, maybe that thought would occur to you, too. Uh, this book, another favorite, uh, reminded my, my own daughter. It's about an orphan girl uh, adopted by an elderly brother and sister in uh, Prince Edward Island because they wanted a kid to help them with their chores. They get a girl by mistake instead of a boy. And in the movie version, uh, the sister says, a girl, what use can she be to us? And Matthew, uh, uh, Richard Farnsworth, the brother, says, I was thinking maybe we could be of some use to her. And I think of that all the time when I'm trying to create value for other people. Thank you.